Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. J. Edgar Hoover, the former head of the FBI, sensationally suggested that Prince Philip might have been involved with two women central to the Profumo sex scandal. Hoover relayed this claim in a cable to the U.S. Embassy in London, noting that Prince Philip was purportedly connected with both Christine Keeler and Mandy Rice Davies. This cable, sent over 60 years ago, was uncovered in the U.S. Department of Justice archives following a protracted Freedom of Information request. The allegation originated from Thomas Corbally, an American businessman engaged in industrial espionage and a friend of Stephen Ward, the figure at the heart of the scandal. Ward, an osteopath, introduced Keeler, then a 19-year-old model, to John Profumo, the Secretary of State for War. The ensuing affair forced Profumo to resign and nearly toppled Harold Macmillan's government. Hoover's cable, obtained by the Mail on Sunday, quotes Corbally, Corbally also stated there was a rumour Prince Philip may have been involved with these two girls. This diplomatic communication, dated June 20th, 1963, has reignited speculation, partly fueled by the Netflix series The Crown. In the show, Anthony Blunt, later revealed as a Soviet spy, threatens to expose Prince Philip's relationship with Ward, which had been portrayed as dramatised but highly popular. The suggestion of Prince Philip's potential link to Keeler and Rice Davies is unsettling on both sides of the Atlantic. Hoover, who led the FBI and its predecessor from 1924 until his death in 1972, was notorious for his extensive surveillance and wiretapping of powerful individuals, often accused posthumously of abusing his authority. The notion that Prince Philip, who passed away at 99 in 2021, might have been entangled in Hoover's operations would have strained Anglo-US relations during the Cold War. Reports previously indicated that Prince Philip and Ward were acquaintances, possibly sharing membership in a London club. Anthony Blunt, the surveyor of the Queen's pictures, was allegedly involved in acquiring every sketch of the royal family by Ward when they were exhibited in a London gallery. Ward was arrested and charged with living off the earnings of prostitution. He overdosed on sleeping pills during his trial, was convicted in absentia, and died before sentencing. Keeler, introduced to Perfumo by Ward at a 1961 party at the Cliveden estate, was also romantically involved with Yevgeny Ivanov, a Soviet spy. The explosive revelations surrounding Keeler, Perfumo, and Ivanov were too scandalous for Perfumo's political career to endure ultimately engulfing the conservative government in controversy. Princess Eugenie recently displayed her playful sense of humour during a conversation with British artist Jake Gruel as part of the Artists in Conversation series for the Yale Centre for British Art. While discussing his artistic techniques, Gruel mentioned he sometimes draws in a trance-like state, joking, where we could just kind of like whip out like a nude without even looking at the figure, you know? This elicited a cheeky response from Princess Eugenie, who laughed and quipped, I love that, whip it out. Gruel, joining in the humour, replied, yeah, like, literally. This rare and light-hearted moment occurred as Princess Eugenie continues to champion British art in her role as director of Hauser and Worth. She is engaging in a series of artists in conversation events, which bring together curators and artists to discuss their practices and insights. Despite her recent high-profile activities, including supporting her cousin, Prince William, at a Buckingham Palace garden party, it remains unlikely that Princess Eugenie will become a full-time working royal. According to royal expert Grant Harold, Eugenie is cautious about taking on more official duties as she is passionate about maintaining her own career and personal interests. More Palace in just a moment. As we attempt to get through today's episode without mentioning you know who and his wife, let's see how Hanisha Sethi fared trying out the King's jams for the Express. We learned the King Charles jams and preserves are renowned for their quality and taste, handmade with the finest ingredients from the United Kingdom. The fruits are often sourced from the gardens of royal palaces. I couldn't wait to try them. After exploring an impressive selection at the Royal Collection Shop and a visit to the Buckingham Palace Shop in central London, Hanisha chose to test the following jams and preserves. Orange and whiskey marmalade from the Palace of Holyrood House, Scottish heather honey from Balmoral Estate, lemon marmalade with gin and juniper berries from Buckingham Palace, Buckingham Palace orchard fruits, and Buckingham Palace strawberry preserve. 
The packaging of these royal jams is as impressive as their contents. Each jar is elegantly designed with a royal crest, making them perfect gifts for food and royal enthusiasts. The labels are simple yet sophisticated, reflecting the royal brand's emphasis on quality and tradition. Opening the jar of Orchard Fruits jam released a rich, fruity aroma that immediately made her mouth water. The deep, dark purple color promised a burst of flavor. This jam, made with English blackberries, plums, blueberries, and cherries, spread easily over clotted cream and fresh scones. The sharp, tangy flavor balanced perfectly with the sweetness of sugar, allowing the natural tartness of the blackberries to shine. It felt like eating fresh garden blackberries at their peak ripeness. Onto the lemon marmalade with gin and juniper berries. This distinctive marmalade, featuring hand-picked botanicals from Buckingham Palace's garden, offers a bold twist on the classic orange marmalade. The inclusion of gin and juniper berries adds a unique, flavorful dimension. The lemon marmalade, with its chewy lemon rind, is perfect for those who enjoy bold, citrusy flavors with a growing up twist. It's a delightful, sophisticated take on a traditional favorite. A fan of natural honey, Hanisha eagerly anticipated the Scottish Heather Honey, the jar's label featuring the unicorn, the national animal of Scotland, and the Scottish arms, added a special touch. This velvety, aromatic honey, gathered from beehives on the heather-rich moorland of the Balmoral Estate, exudes a fragrant blend of floral and earthy notes. The orange marmalade with Scottish whiskey combines sweet oranges with the warm, smoky notes of Scotch whiskey. The whiskey adds depth and complexity, elevating the citrus flavor and creating a rich, slightly alcoholic spread. The thick-cut orange pills provide a satisfying bite, complementing the smooth, jelly-like base. This robust and hearty marmalade is ideal for those who enjoy substantial spreads. And don't overlook the Buckingham Palace Strawberry Preserve. Each spoonful of the strawberry jam captures the essence of summer with its vibrant, sweet flavor. While delightful, it tasted similar to other strawberry jams on the market and was slightly on the sweet side. It works best when used sparingly on scones or as a thin layer with buttercream and a sponge cake. The texture, however, felt homemade, making it a simple and reliable choice for afternoon tea. Overall, in a market crowded with royal-related jam options, King Charles' selection of royal jams stands out as luxury items. They offer a royal experience with their unique flavors, quality ingredients, and elegant packaging, making each jar a delightful indulgence. As far as we can tell, His Majesty has yet to expand his offerings to the world of dog biscuits. Unlike some other famous people in royal circles, King Charles is said not to be a monster to work for. An unnamed former employee shared insights with the Daily Beast about working for King Charles and Queen Camilla. Ultimately, people like working for him, but everyone is under a lot of pressure because his office is incredibly busy. He's absolutely not a monster in the office, but he is a human, and he snaps sometimes. Unfortunately, there is sometimes a camera on him when it happens. The ex-employee emphasized that King Charles is extremely well prepared as an employer and does not suffer fools. They added, in fairness to him, as anyone who has actually worked with him will tell you, he himself is always extremely well prepared, well read on the subject matter of people he meets, and is working with diligent and respectful of expertise. A Samoan beach resort set to host King Charles during his October tour is hastily upgrading its outdated rooms in preparation for the royal visit. The four-star hotel, unnamed for security reasons, has received £85,000 in government funding to enhance its facilities, as reported by The Telegraph. Last week, Buckingham Palace confirmed that His Majesty will be visiting the Polynesian island as part of his Autumn Commonwealth tour, which includes stops in Australia and Samoa. The royal couple is expected to stay in the hotel's presidential suite with a significant portion of the funds allocated to refurbishing the suite and improving the driveway. Prince George celebrated his 11th birthday on Monday, and Kensington Palace unveiled a new photograph of the young prince to commemorate the occasion. The photograph, captured by Kate at Windsor earlier this month, was shared on Kensington Palace's social media platforms. The black and white image shows Prince George looking mature and poised, dressed in an open-necked white shirt and dark blazer, smiling warmly at the camera. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or the app of your choice, and write a review. Hit those stars if you're enjoying the show. Don't forget we have merch and subscriptions available, and all the links are in the show notes. It all supports us here behind the show. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. Good times.